Hello and welcome to Sam's Judo. Today we're going to cover a very nice technique called O Uchigari, which is major inner reap, and we hope you enjoy it. Okay, um, how does O Uchigari work? Now, O Uchigari is a leg technique, which means reaping and catching your opponent between the legs. Now, we start off with the normal kumikata. Holding onto the chest and then holding the uh, elbow. Now, this is very, very important. You must not hold on the edge of the lapel. Always just underneath the elbow, and there's a reason for this. Now, the entry for Ochigari is a little bit like fencing, and there's different ways to actually enter the technique. Now, I normally start with my right leg forward, my left foot back, and what I need to do is to aim to take a little step forward, right and left, a bit like a fencer. And what's important, I need to enter my opponent's gravity by bringing my right foot right between his legs and I should be able to see my toes onto the other side. So if you leave your leg behind and you can't see the toes, that means you haven't entered deep enough. So it's very important to come quite low. As you enter, you have to bend your knees, otherwise you'll end up hitting your opponent where you shouldn't be. And I need to scoop his leg. So it's right and left like so, right leg, left leg. Now, as I do that, I need to start controlling the, the top part of the body, and that's done by lifting this arm up this way, and that's very, very important. You'll often see people pinning people down for this. Um, I like to use the kuzushi to break my opponent's balance. Now, with the Uchigari, I'll be attacking his left leg. So what I want to do, like most techniques, is to put a lot of emphasis on putting a little bit of weight on that leg because that's the leg I'll be supporting him. Very similar to Oso Togari, when you take the weight onto this leg and then you sweep the supporting leg away. This time I'm going to put the weight onto his left leg. And these are the little uh, areas that people don't cover. So right, left, and when you're in, you should be, your face should be looking this way and your body should be quite close to his chest. This hand comes up, like so. Now what this does, it tips opponent onto his left side, putting a little bit of emphasis onto his supporting right leg. If we change the angle, you can see what's happening here. Okay, so that's the movement. Now what does this hand do? This hand is used to come underneath your opponent's left shoulder, just dropping down. And it's also used just to break the balance. If you can notice, it's directing my opponent to his left side. So I've got both hands working to take all the weight, putting a lot of weight onto his leg. So the practice is across it. When all his weight is on the right leg, then all I've got to do, support myself onto the supporting leg. And then with my right leg, Attack and take Uki's supporting leg. You can power your way in a throw or you can do it the easy way. The idea is maximum efficiency with minimum effort. So if I understand the mechanics of the technique, it doesn't matter if it's a tall person, short person, heavy person, you break someone's balance, it becomes to your advantage. So let's see this from this angle. And there's the leg sweep. Okay. Sometimes your opponent's body weight pulls you over. All you need to do is to step over and support yourself. Okay, um, we've just explained that I put a lot of my opponent's weight onto his left foot. But don't make the mistake, I'm not actually throwing him sideways. Ochigari is a rear technique, so you're actually taking your opponent backwards. But when I take Uki backwards, it's slightly to the left. So there's a slight angle involved. Because what I don't want to do is Uki to have weight on this leg. If you take someone straight backwards, technically he's got some support on this leg. When you take him backwards, but slightly at an angle, if you notice this leg then is, is weaker. So then all I've got to do is step in, take the supporting leg away, and there's your, and there's your throw. So direction is very important if you want to understand judo and you want it to work better for you. 
There's an easy way, a hard way, and a difficult way. This is the technical side. So understanding the science behind a throw is very, very important. So what have we talked about? We talked about an entry, which is stationary at this present time. Kumikata, right, left. We talked about being able to see the leg from the back of your of the of the thigh, so you're nice and deep. That's very important as well because then I have a lot of leg to be able to come in and hook my opponent's leg. If you stay if you stay too far back, your leg is short. If you come deep, then you have a lot of power to sweep the leg. Now that's very very important as well. A lot of people do ochigari by lifting the leg quite high up. There is an easier way where we attack the calf of the leg. This is the strongest part. Up here, it's not good because people bend their leg and they can absorb your energy. By attacking the calf, because all the weight is on that leg, then the leg will move so much more easy. Okay, let's see the difference from here, coming up here. That's what happens. And this is why sometimes you get uki hopping backwards and backwards and backwards because you haven't secured the breaking of the balance you haven't pushed uki in the right direction you haven't controlled him and he's got the balance onto the left leg which we talked about so this will happen if you get it wrong okay here that's what happens that's because the sweep is too low now let's look at me attacking instead of here we're going to attack here so knowing where to put your legs is important Let's see the difference. With hardly any effort, he gets slide, his leg slides over like he slipped on a banana. He's very quick, very effective, and he's 10 times more stronger. So don't just stick your leg out anywhere. We're trying to understand Ochigari, and I'm explaining it how to do it properly. So, put everything together. Komi Kata, Uchikomi, up, up. Up. And this hand we talked about comes down here. Up, 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 down, and this controls Uki. Now, when I sweep, this hand action will follow my leg action. Do not make the mistake, a lot of people do, as this leg sweeps, this leg pushes backwards. Or sometimes, as you sweep, you push down the way. Very common problem for beginners, but it's nothing to worry about. Uh, it's very common because it's to do with coordination. So your hand should follow your leg actions, like a sweeping or like a cutting of a sword, which a phrase I like to use on all my videos because that movement is so important. So if you get everything correct, one, two, three, and step over. Hook it as a nice break for, and don't forget beginners, always support your opponent. Actually, that's not just for beginners. We support opponent for two reasons. One is to help him do a break for so he doesn't get hurt. The other thing is we don't want him to get away. We got control of him for transitions. Just in case you haven't scored it point, you will need to follow into knee water. Okay? So that is uh, all Uchigari major in the reef. Um, there are different variations. I want to talk about this hand today. This is your normal old chigari, which is coming here and controlling Uki. Another variation which is very interesting is one of the reasons why I like to hold onto the chest, not too low, too high, is when you step in, we do all the, everything the same, but this hand comes over and traps the shoulder. So we have this movement. Yeah, now you can see what's happening here. I talked about taking Uki back onto the left hand side, and this is a good way of me explaining, uh, emphasizing the direction of the throw, which is important because I see often people just pushing back. Yeah, even the Japanese do this, they push straight back, but there is a better way, slightly more advanced way is to bring up over, trap the shoulder. Now you can see what's happening, all his weight is on this leg because I've bent his hip. Because all his weight's on this side, I need to do slightly less work with the left hand, and then everything else comes into play. I trap the shoulder, I step in, then I just take the supporting leg. 
and this hand follows Uki straight down to the ground. In fact, I can take him down just with the hand from here. Yeah. Take him down. That's so powerful, so effective. So if you can combine all the elements of the entry, of the hand action, which is Kuzushi, you often hear people talk about Kuzushi because Kuzushi is what controls the top part of our body. Yes, Uki is strong on the legs, but this is strong as well. If you learn to control the top part of the body, that's the first thing that's gonna break. His toes are not gonna break, his balance is not gonna break. It's the shoulders. You start controlling the shoulders and then you're in more in control to make your throw easier. So this is very nice. A little exercise is just coming in. Yeah, trap it, okay? You step in, tap, step in. There's okay. going over. And as you notice, he's always falling slightly to the left. So that is a very nice way to understand uh, all Uchigari made in the ring. So, it's a very, very important technique. At this stage, the Uchigari is done stationary, and this is just one entry coming in. Another entry I like to do, which is a, a little bit more training entry, what I call the seesaw action. Instead of stepping, straight in, which is, this is the, the novice way of teaching people how to understand Ochigari. If I'm stepping in the middle, if you step to the right, so you go one, yeah, you do one, two, tight. Watch again, one, two, tight. What I'm doing, I'm swinging. I'm taking my body this way and then coming back this way. So it's a two-way action, one, two. This creates a seesaw. My opponent will think there's something happening onto the right side, and it gives me a slightly different momentum, and it gives me more of a sweeping action. So the hand action falls this way, one, and then suddenly I take it this way. Uh, it's a very nice, actually this is my favorite way of attacking. One, one, two, one, two. We do it from here, you'll be able to see. This is your normal way. You can try it here. One, one, two, three. Okay. Right toe to right toe. One, your left foot comes in. One, two. Then I take another direction. It's a very nice way to develop and create movement and agility. I think uh, if we stick to those two methods uh, before we do anything more complicated. So this is old Chigari, major inner reap. We talked about the legs, we talked about the entry, we talked about the hands. We know what to do with our hands now. We're not just gonna pin somebody down. We're gonna break his balance. We're gonna direct them in the direction we're gonna throw. We know we're gonna put the emphasis on that left leg. We know how to sweep. We talked about the hands following this week. We talked about the depth, which is coming very close, not far away. So we know now why we've got to get very deep, get nice and low. If you go away and practice this, lots of which you call me, thousands and thousands. Remember, everything we do right side has to be done left side. Another very important point to take out I like to do Chigari on different sized people. If somebody's very tall, I don't have to bend very low. If somebody's shorter than me, I've got to get even lower to come into it. You often see other variations of Chigari, but well, it goes onto the floor. So your legs are capable of dropping and adjusting. This is the best way to develop all judo techniques. Don't stick to the same opponent. Practice with a variety of people to keep your chance for your technique to adapt, and that's what it's about. Judo is not just learning the skill, not learning the dynamics, it's being able to adapt your throw with whatever opponent you're gonna come across. Right side, left side, big, tall, short, okay, slow. It's very, very important. It's not just learning the techniques. You've got to understand there are methods of developing and training these techniques. So, we will finish off with a few throws. Hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. Click please subscribe to Samson's Judo, that will help us a lot. 
and we'd like to hear your comments as well as always thank you very much for watching hello everybody and thank you for watching if my content has inspired you and it has helped you judo please consider subscribing to my youtube channel liking the video or leaving a small uh, comment even if it's a small emoji that would really help us if you wanted to help us another way we have some links below which you can use to help support the channel uh, through a donation our donations will be used to fund international trips for our students as well as helping us continue with our content.